Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching the Cineform Renderthon show. If you have any feedback about the show, let me know in the comment section down below. In these next couple videos, both uploaded on the same day, we'll be giving our overall conclusion of our experiences with the series with the server building experience, what we learned, how we're using it today, and so on. This video is actually going to be featuring the guy or die or Rio's conclusion here. And then in the other video, which will also be uploaded today, you can check out in the YouTube card icon above or link in the description below. I will give my conclusions and overall thoughts on the process as well. So without further ado, enjoy. Rio's perspective. Cineform Renderthon, the transcoding build off server challenge between the guy or die and Epos Vox, where we try to build the best transcoding server for rendering our videos in Cineform for the cheapest price by eBay server parts. Thank you so much to Kingston for sponsoring this series by providing Epos Vox with his ECC memory, which keeps his build stable and secure throughout the entire rendering process. Visit the link in the description to learn more. Hello, my name is Rio or the Gardai Online. Um, I have been working with Epos Fox on this uh, render renderthon, I guess you want to call it, project for it's been about six months now. So it's really given us both a good time to kind of um, use what we've built and figure out how useful or, or how not useful this project and what it has produced has been to us. Um, so I feel like I've kind of got a very good idea of how either I, I want to pitch this to you guys or, or explain to you um, the faults of what this project brought and how I could have done it better next time. So if you're looking to create a render farm or a render machine of your own um, for whatever purpose, encoding or anything like that, you can um, hopefully make a more well-informed decision on the parts you're selecting, or anything uh, about building or the actual product once you're done. So the first and most obvious thing I overlooked was um, when I got my motherboard, I didn't specifically look for whether or not it had a PCI Express port on it. I just assumed, you know, PCI Express was a, a standard um, and that, you know, most motherboards would have at least one PCI Express port on them. That was a, a big mistake on my part. Uh, <laughs> this motherboard, at least in the top unit, which you can't see, that's a new unit that I'll talk about in a second behind me. Um, the top one, which is the one I built, uh, and you guys saw, it. the motherboard uh, was an Intel S25, or you guys will know, it's, uh, it's been a while as I've mentioned, but it has no PCI Express port on it, and that was a big mistake. I looked into PCI-X, which is what it did have, PCI X to PCI E converter. Those things are very expensive and they only work about the speed of a PCI regular bus, which is very slow and no graphics card would have worked. No acceleration would be given. Um, so it's just something interesting that I found out about. And of course, as you make these sort of projects, it's the cost of learning. And I'm completely fine with that. It works really good as a CPU only rendering machine and all. I will of course get to that in a second because I am using it for something other than encoding right now. The second thing that I learned is always, always make sure with these server boards that you are getting uh, enclosures that fit appropriately. I was just kind of blown away by the lack of concrete documentation given for these server boards because they're meant and designed to be uh, received and built as one unit with a chassis that comes with it. Um, because servers are usually something that companies buy in bulk and they're pre-made and you just slide them in and you install them. Like the one you're seeing behind me, that is, an, uh, that is a Dell PowerEdge uh, 610. Um, so those things you buy and you slide into the server rack, they're good to go and you just set up. Um, building a server is something a little bit more taboo in the business world. Usually they buy units in bulk, like I said, but when you're building, you need to make, need to make absolute sure that you get an enclosure that will fit it. Um, the one above that I, you guys saw me build is an SSI CEB certified motherboard sizing. Uh, so the first case that I got that you guys saw didn't work was a um, extended ATX, I believe. Uh, and that is nowhere near fitting. This one's 12 by 13 inches in size. Um, so that did not fit at all. 
So I got a one up size for my case and it barely fit. I had to take out the hard drive enclosure to make room and it's just sitting next to it. So I did have to gut a little bit. Um, it is not a server meant um, case and I had a really hard time finding documentation on what server cases there are, uh, if any that would fit because this is such an outdated board. Um, usually the cheap boards are the outdated ones and they have little to no documentation floating out there, uh, at least this one didn't. It's a lot of research and if you're going to go into a project like this, you need to be okay with the fact that you are going to make a lot of, uh, a lot of, or you're going to have to make a lot of time to uh, research these things and dig through Google on days on end with maybe little to no result just to find that little piece of information that you needed. Um, and even then, it's not even a sure thing. Um, there was a lot of misinformation floating around about this board as well, especially with the sizing, which is what led me to um, make such big mistakes with buying the wrong, the wrong equipment and casing and sizing for all that. So it's just really hard if you're going to be using outdated server equipment like uh, Epos and I have been doing. It's, um, it's worth a lot of research and you should take your time. I felt like a lot of my research was rushed because either one, I was um, very anxious to get things built and ready to go. And secondly, because I'm used to just being able to have everything be compatible with, um, with consumer grade products. That is not the case at all with servers. You need to be really picky on details and the, minor, the most minor thing you overlook that with consumer grade stuff will be okay and they'll probably work out and be compatible. Not the case with server boards. You need to really take your time. With eBay, of course, if it's your first time buying stuff on there, um, just learn the trade with some low cost value items. If you have a need for something like sponges or something, I know it sounds stupid, but if you have a need for something like less expensive um, and you're gonna buy it anyways, experiment around with how eBay works using those items, um, especially with auctioning. I didn't know about a lot of things about the automatic bidding about um, you know highest bid. It's explained, but it's hard to know exactly how it works without actually um, using those features and seeing firsthand how they work. So I would recommend um, kind of testing out the waters if you're new to eBay. Of course, you don't have to go with eBay. You can buy from official resellers um, and that's a good route to go. But if you're really down on minimizing every single dollar like um, Epos and I have been doing, um, it's really worth just with your own money um, figuring out how exactly eBay works as a system before you dive in and put hundreds of dollars on the line. That's when things could go possibly bad. I'm not saying they will, but um, understand the system you're using before putting a lot of money on the line. That's my suggestion. And finally, I'm going to come to the case use and what I've learned after using these machines, I guess now um, I bought a separate server um, that are behind me, what I've learned after six months. So the one you can see, that is one that I bought pre-built, like I said, Dell PowerEdge R610. Really great machine. Right off the bat, I can tell it's a lot more snappy than the one I built. Um, I'm not sure whether that's down to software or um, how I built it. It does have six SAS drives in it. So I've split the load across all six of them. Um, it has hardware RAID in there. Um, a lot of bells and whistles. And I got this whole unit off of eBay for about 250. I think between $250 and $300, um, which is less than I spent on building my own, which was a pain and a half. This one's faster, it came pre-built, the chassis was bent a little bit, I had to bend it back so I could slide in the PSUs. No real damage, it runs like a charm, and it costs less. If you guys are going to look into a like project like this, don't be too stubborn about buying pre-built stuff. I have a very hard stigma against buying stuff that's pre-built, um, when in reality, um, you don't really need to be that stigmatized to something like that. Um, building a computer is fun, building a server is fun, but if you're in the interest of saving time, which is money for a lot of people, definitely be okay with buying a pre-built machine. It's totally fine. This one runs even better, like I said, and it's just simple. It saves you time, saves you research, and it gives people on eBay 
their job, I guess. Now let's get to the one I actually built. That thing runs well. I'm not saying anything bad about it just by floating around the newer machine that I bought. Um, it runs well. I have upgraded with an SSD since, um, but not with the operating system. I'm using it as a virtualization machine. So I put my VMs on the, on the um, SSD, so those run faster. And I have, of course, my terabyte uh, Western Digital Caviar Black in there. Um, as I mentioned, I'm using it as a virtualization machine now, um, which each VM is running a render instance. I'm using these machines both for my uh, business servers now. So they receive and make, alter, send out graphic design orders for me. Uh, if you're not aware of my business, it's uh, TGOD Designs, TGOD Designs. Um, basically, we make uh, customizable uh, template designed uh, intros, outros, banners, all that good stuff. And you come to the website and you customize it and then kicks it off to these servers. They customize it, make it, render it, send it to you. So that's what they're doing now. They are still render machines, but they're highly virtualized. So I've had to upgrade a little bit of RAM and of course put an SSD. Um, with AME, um, Adobe Media Encoder, and doing the Cineform conversion, I didn't find I had too, too much use for that as the camera I shoot on is a uh, very, very like, it's not, it doesn't create big files. So I didn't have really a full need for um, kind of turning those into Cineform for editing because they were, they were never really laggy in the timeline. Um, the only thing I would think about doing that for is gameplay content, which I've kind of weaned off of um, in the past year. But having these things uh, render what I would normally pay someone out in the UK to um, give me servers for, and that would normally cost um, like $120 a month, Building these things for like 300 and around 400 um, saves me so much money in the long run. And of course I pay the power bill and I pay the internet bill, but I pay both those anyways and these things are really kind of um, more energy efficient and they don't end up costing me that much. So it's been a really great deal for me um, to have these machines here. I can work with them, I can add um, hardware layer VPNs, I can add my own switches, I can manage them, um, where you can't do something like that if you rent servers somewhere else. So it's been really great, I've really, like, this process has been really good for me because I've learned about building server equipment, how different it is, and I hope I can share that um, experience with you guys, or at least you learn something um, from this sort of build log reflection. Um, project and I guess if you are contemplating um, taking this leap for yourself there's no downside you will always have a useful it. server in my eyes it can do so many things it can be a web server you can offload rendering to it you can use it for so many things so if you are in the look to kind of build your own server definitely go for it it's worth the learning experience if you have the money if you just need something that works it'll probably be cheaper and easier for you to buy a pre-built machine off of eBay who's someone who has used it and no longer needs it. Um, server equipment is great and you'll find very good prices out there. So if you're looking into it, more power to you. I hope that you have the best experience possible. You will make mistakes. And if you go into it knowing that, then you've got pretty much nothing to lose. So yeah, hope you guys did learn something. The benchmarks I'm sure Epos has shared with you already. And um, I found out they were building. My name has been Rio, and thank you to Epos for kind of stirring up the the idea for this project. Um, I've had a lot of fun, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for watching Rio's conclusions of the Cineform Renderthon Server Building Challenge. If you want to come see my conclusions on my server build and the like with a little bit of B-roll up in there, go ahead and click the card icon or link in the description below, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. I, d I don't know what I'm doing here. I wanted to say something and then I forgot what I was going to say and I just kind of held it there. Subscribe for more tech videos, like it, share it, comment. Bye bye